motherfuckers. You clickbaiting motherfucker. Um, You're just like the rest of them. This is why I don't do interviews we're anymore. Because the motherfuckers like this. <laughs> we're done. That's why. Oh, fuck this shit. I'm actually walking off set. Never walked off set before, but now I'm actually going to walk off set. So fuck you, Jeff Sandler. Fuck you, JSV. This interview is brought to you by the All Star, the best MMA app in the business. Live fight stats, betting odds, fighter records, and more. Completely ad free. Download it now. Ask me. You are considered one of the most intelligent fighters to ever enter the octagon. Fighters can learn from the best coaches and the best systems, but it takes a fighter to absorb the knowledge and implement it. Could you explain how differently your brain is wired, or is it something else? I think, yeah, definitely it's a combination of me and a combination of the team. You know, Eugene and the, I guess, the um, the expendable squad he's he's put together from, you know, guys like Twist, um, Mike Angove, Adam Johnson, you know, Andre, and so on. Um, he's put together a nice group of coaches that help him break down fights and give him insights onto what each fight requires or what each opponent brings to the to the fight. But also, there's that, and then there's me, because they go hand in hand. Like there's me. The way I look at fights is different to the way I think most people look at fights. I look at fights. I don't. Know, I look at fights, yeah, but I, f I feel the fight, if that, that, that makes sense. I like to feel the fight, the rhythm of the fight, the pace of the fight. And that's where I feel like I thrive, the energy of the fight. Like, you know, it's like, it's like waves. When it's push and pull, you have to know how to adapt to each one, um, or each moment of the fight. So yeah, the way I'm able to just like be in the moment and work well with the corner and the the wisdom there, there, there telling me um yeah it's a combination of both um okay you're heading into a fight against a guy that has beaten you in the past revenge can play a part in the emotions and mentality mm -hmm. how do you control that side of yourself is it like a mind trick mm -hmm. mental exercises like how do you go in there with a straight head and not just wanting revenge mm -hmm. um because i let i let go of this a long time ago a long time i made peace with this a long time ago because that loss the the, the second fight you know, the knockout loss made me stronger. It made me, I think I knocked out my next opponents or the next couple of opponents. Um, it definitely made me stronger in a way that I needed to at the time. So I made peace with it because I just thought like, oh, well, that's that, that's kickboxing done. Um, so I never like seeked revenge or anything. But now that it's here, I didn't ask for it. The universe bestowed this upon me and it's a, it's a great opportunity to rewrite history. Um. Pressure is part of being a fighter. It escalates as you move forward in your career. Your UFC debut, top 15, champion, pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. You seem to be able to live in an extreme pressure of expectations and superstar status. And do you ever have that moment in the mirror where you collect yourself? Has it ever become too much and overwhelmed in the past? Uh, overwhelming, not through fighting. The only time it was overwhelming was years ago. Years ago, I, I was on a trip and looked in the mirror and... That was overwhelming. But for fighting, no. I mean, that's what my post-fight shower is for. My post-fight shower is um, a, a time of reflection of what just happened of, of the last few hours, last few weeks, last few months, and just gathering my thoughts and being grateful, being thankful. So yeah, I have those moments as well, just during life, you know? Even just, I'm glad I, I have my, my, my buddy like Chance who understands me because times I'll just like stand in front of the mirror there for like two minutes and I'll just be shadow boxing and he doesn't judge me doesn't anything he just understands what I'm doing I'm doing reps there's things I've worked on this camp that I actually does I just rep I rep them in the kitchen in the mirror you know by the pool it just happens so yeah he doesn't judge me I'm like oh what are you doing <laughs> you know like those kind of friends yeah so I just, it's all reps, it's all reps. And those moments I have with myself in the mirror, that's just, yeah, chance to be better at the man in the mirror. So there's a lot of, you know, champions after they lose, they talk about this relief of pressure. Mm. I know Camaro just did it, Rose has mm. done it, and those other champions have done it. What do you think that means? And does... I don't know, but I don't, I, I think for me even, like, you know, God forbid, even if I lost the belt at some point, 
um, without retiring. I don't think it's I don't think it's gonna take the pressure off me because I'm still me. I'm still me. You know, everybody's saying I'm him. I'm him. I'm him. No, I'm me. I'm still me. You understand? So like, regardless of whoever I fight, they're getting the chance to fight me. Fuck the belt. They're getting a chance to fight me. It's like when Silva lost the belt. When people still signed to fight Silva, that was still Anderson Silva. That was still like in its own category in a way. Same thing is happening with McGregor. When people sign up to fight with McGregor, that's still some people take that over the fucking the belt because they know what comes with that. So um, yeah, uh, I'm not him. I'm me. He was gonna say you don't think it's actually a relief because you look at people like Whitaker. Mm-hmm. He's he talked about when he lost the belt. He's another one. So mm-hmm. He said, but now he's been chasing the belt back. Chasing the dragon. I don't. That's not. I've never. Uh, what did I always say about the belt? The belt's just the fancy tiara. Exactly. See, you know. So it's like, uh, ooh, like I'm. I don't. I don't even know what the belt is right now. I, I couldn't tell you. I if I want to get it, I can go grab it. It'll probably take me till tomorrow to find it, but. I can go get it. I know it's probably somewhere in the gym or with Eugene, but I actually don't, I don't attach myself to this thing because it's not, it doesn't make me. I make the belt. The belt never made me. I make the belt. So I don't, I don't, I don't see myself, you know, losing the belt, but also I don't, I don't, I can understand where they're coming from. I guess the pressure of like the, the target on your back or whatever, but I'm like, even without the belt, I'm still gonna have a target on my back, so I don't think it's gonna change much. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna change much. So you've been uh, like a headliner, I think, ten uh, ten times. Have I? Cool. This is ten times. Damn, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> and you're like nor, and now with COVID, post COVID, now the cards always stacked with like mm-hmm. CKB people. Is like, ooh, does that? Obviously, I've seen you in the back, but could you explain to other people how, how do you keep your energy from not going crazy when one of the guys gets knocked out or if one of the guys maybe loses? How do you stay still? Or oh, wins. Yeah, wins or loses. How do you keep that energy like so you can compete? I keep the same energy. Exactly. I always do. So I don't... Like, we're in the trenches right now, you know. We're in the trenches right now. Um, backstage, if you know one of the boys wins... Yeah, fuck yeah. That adds to the, you know, morale of the team. Cool. Boom, boom, boom. But I don't attach myself to it. I feel it and I let it go. Same thing if, if, if a teammate loses. Like, I've, I've had that before in the back when a teammate loses. I'm like, you know, I, I, I talk to them. I, uh, you know, I let them know I'm with them. But I don't hold on to it because I still have my job to do. It's not selfish. It's just reality. My reality, I guess. I just, I have my job to do. You know, my job's not over. And I'm... I'm there from the jump. I'm there. <coughs> Excuse me. Classic. Um, <coughs> I'm there from the jump. So like this fight, Carlos is the first stop of the night. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And regardless of the outcome, I'm going to be there still. I'm going to be with him. But I don't hold on to it. I don't sit with that emotion because it's not mine. That's not my burden to or my joy to carry. So I just, I let it pass through me. Yeah, feel it and let it pass through so I can focus on my work. It's just experience, I guess. Mm. Do you ever, like, watch interviews from your opponents or your opponent's coaches? Is there anything to take away from Le- that? Leading up to the fight? Yes. No. No, not leading up to the fight. Afterwards, yes, just so I can... Is it confirmation bias? No. Just so I can see if I was right on certain things. Afterwards, yes, because I don't like to look too much on them right now. Like, even right now, bro, this nigga giving me fucking mad Costa vibes, bro. I literally, he did the Segway thing or the hoverboard thing, and I was like, I I thought that was, I didn't even know that was a diss at me. So I was kind of like, really? Okay, whatever. And then he just recently did the tennis ball thing. I I, I seen that on on the gram, and I was just like, "Uh okay. I remember Costa was doing skits with his guys and all that shit. Same thing. I don't react. I'm like, what do you want from me? He wants me to react. I, I don't react, but I will respond. I'll respond with violence when it's time. There's there's word out there that John Jones told Alex Pereira to stop o- uploading training footage online. Do you think that's true, and why? Don't care. But if it's true, it's, mm, he knows why. <laughs> he knows why. 
prayer is a, is a massive 185er, and many people are pointing to the size difference. Will that play a negative factor inside the cage in t- over 25 minutes? Oh, definitely, bro. He's not going to last. I mean, you've seen me objectively, even yesterday on the work we did. You've seen what we, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. I can go fucking 45 minutes. If this fight has to go each round till someone falls, trust me, I know who's going to stand. I know who's going to be left standing. But 25 minutes, I, I honestly think within the first five minutes, within the first round, even three minutes with the pace we're going to, I think it's going to be a high pace. He's not going to be able to keep that high pace. In the first round, you're going to see him start to fold. He's not going to be able to keep the high pace. And, yeah, I know, I know, I know the kind of pace I can put. So, yeah, if, if, it's, if it's going to play a factor, if, if they think it's going to help them, well, kudos to them. Good luck to them. For me, I just know what I'm doing. I'm, what am I right now? Like 205, 204, ripped. So yeah, I just don't, size doesn't really play too much of a factor in that sense for me. Did you go into this camp? I mean, you're always motivated, you're a professional, and is there a little bit of extra motivation in this camp? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I didn't go chasing this. I had made peace with this. Like, yo, sweet. That fight's never gonna happen. But now here it is. It's obviously, I know what this is for me. I know what this is for me. So for me, I, yeah, I've, Anyone who knows me knows the kind of, you know, the kind of work I put in, and they know that I definitely stepped it up this camp. This camp, I stepped it up to a new level to the point where there's no stone left unturned. I still live my life, you know, I still do me, but yeah, I made sure I put put the work in this camp. Yeah, there's a little extra motivation, definitely. So you gave Alex a six on the threat meter. Mm. Was there another fighter that you maybe underestimated and had to p- pull out all of their all the stops? Not underestimated, but Gastelum. Gastelum, I just, I just assumed I would, I would be able to style on them like I did um, earlier on with um, Tavares. But Gastelum was just there, so I was like, fine, I'm here too. I'm not going away. And I had to show him. So I, I, I know he's going to be there. He's not going to fold. He can take a shot. I've seen the um, sequence of me trying to finish him in the second round like two days ago. It just came up on my YouTube or something, and I clicked it. And I was watching it, and I was just like, even though I was just throwing a lot of right hands, mainly right hands, mainly overhand rights, and like two uppercuts, like fucking 25 right hands or whatever it was. I should have counted. But like, he was still right there trying to fight. He was still right there trying to fight. So, but the thing is, who I was back then is not who I am now. You know, I know when the going gets tough, if he puts it on me, I'm going to be right there and I'm going to give it back. That's the difference. So I know like when you have fights, you have game plans. Mm-hmm. Has there ever been an opponent where you've had to go from game plan A, B, C, D? Like where you had it like mm-hmm. straight from the first plan? In kickboxing or MMA? In kickboxing, I'm trying to think. Uh, I can't remember in kickboxing, but in, in MMA, definitely Gastelum. Um, definitely had to like go through different A, B, C, D just to like, because what we were doing was working, but then when it wasn't working, we had to go back to D. Okay, now go back to A, and okay, C, then A again, then back to B. <laughs> it's like, yeah, um, yeah, Gastelum, I'd have to say, is the only one that comes to mind right now. But it's probably others. I'm just trying to think right now. Who is there one that you didn't have to stray from Plan A at all? That was even. Oh, Costa. Yeah, I was just a. Oh, I just knew. I was like, he gave me his game plan. We knew what he was gonna do, but he gave me his game plan already at the weigh-ins. So I was like, okay, bet. Yeah. Um. Okay. Here's one. Bo Nickel. Mm. You know this man. Mm-hmm. People are anointing him the next middleweight champion before a single UFC fight. Do you have mm-hmm. thoughts on him? He's good. Very. I like what he did. Um, that was a sequence he did in the contender. Southpaw. He left hand, boom, and it was already knee tapping. Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, but I mean, you have to see what he does. I don't. I'm not one of these guys when I just trash him like, oh, this, that, blah, blah, blah. He looks good. He looks good in what he's doing, and yeah. Looks like Frankie. <laughs> I saw Frankie, I was like, you bull nigga looking ass. But yeah, 
Uh, it looks good, so uh, well, let's see. Let's see what he does in the in the UFC on the big stage, and they'll work him properly. I think because he's like some he's a D1 wrestler and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, they'll they'll do the right things to get him to the big fights. Yeah. Okay, and you're asking me all the fucking clickbait questions, man. I see you. Uh, I see you. I see what you're doing. One, hey, one. and the John Jones one. I saw what you did there. I Bo saw what you did there. The you clickbaiting motherfucker. Um, you're just like the rest of them. This is why I don't do interviews we're anymore. Because of motherfuckers like this. <laughs> we're done. That's why. Oh, fuck this shit. I'm actually walking off set. Never walked off set before, but now I'm actually going to walk off set. So fuck you, Jeff St. Larry. Fuck you, JSV. This interview is brought to you by The All-Star, the best MMA app in the business. Live fight stats, betting odds, fighter records, and more. Completely ad-free. Download it now.